Hey friends, welcome to Photoshop Icebreakers. I'm Vanessa, the artist behind the life of AVAX, and I create art inspired by childhood imagination with my family. Now, if you've been following my work, you know that I love to create underwater composites. So today I'm sharing three steps on how to turn any old basic room into a whimsical underwater background. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So here's the photo of this old room that we're gonna use. Now the first thing we gotta do is extend the top part. So we're gonna use Turn It to Fill to do that. So I'm gonna take my rectangular marquee tool and select this top part, then just select Turn It to Fill and Generate. And they're all really good, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and go with option number two, just cause I like the way the beams look a little bit better. Then the next thing I'm gonna do is turn the floor into hardwood floor. I just feel like it makes it look a little bit more interesting than just dirt. So we're gonna go ahead and select generative fill and in this text box, I'm gonna put hardwood floor. Then select generate. Now we have option number one, option number two, and option number three. I'm really liking this one. I just feel like it really is like old and dilapidated. So we're gonna go ahead and roll with this one. So now we can start on the first official step, which is color grading. Now within this step, we have three mini steps that we're gonna take to create the color grading for this. So the first thing we're gonna do is brightness. So we're gonna go ahead and select our brightness and contrast adjustment layer make sure we attach it to that group. And whenever you are creating an underwater scene, you always want to dim the environment. So we're gonna go ahead and take our brightness slider and we're gonna bring that down to about a negative 70. So here's a quick toggle of that. Now what I'm gonna do next is take my mask of this adjustment layer and the brush tool. And I wanna make sure I'm using a soft round brush for this and you want your opacity to be around like 20%. And so what you're gonna do now is you're gonna start from the window and you're gonna work your way in a diagonal line all the way to the floor. And you can see what I'm doing is just replicating what naturally is already there. So it's always nice to start off with an image that has already a natural source of light in it that you can just accentuate. But if for some reason your composite or your room that you're working on does not have that, you would essentially just do the same exact thing, you just be doing it from scratch. Now the next step is to desaturate. Now whenever you're working with an underwater environment, remember all the colors that are there are going to be muted. So you definitely want to pull down on the saturation a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and just bring ours down to about a negative 18. Then the final step within this color grading step is color balance. So we're gonna go ahead and open an adjustment layer for that. I'm gonna drop my cyan down quite a bit. We're gonna go ahead and bring ours down to about a negative 70. Then I'm gonna go ahead and increase my blues to about a, let's go with an 18. And then I'm just gonna add a little bit of magenta to about a negative eight. So that gives it like a really nice blue tone. You have some hints of yellow in there. Anyway, all right, so now we can move on to the second step, which is reflections. So the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to duplicate this layer. I'm gonna go ahead and hide one for now. And we're gonna take this first one and we're gonna apply it to the floor. So I'm gonna go ahead and size it down just a little bit. Then I'm just gonna hold down control and I'm going to take my endpoints and we're going to match the perspective of the water reflections to the floor. Now the next thing we're gonna do is take levels. We're gonna apply it to this layer here. And I'm just gonna take my midtones and I'm gonna go ahead and increase those to make this image a little bit darker. Increase that to a 0.40. Then I'm gonna go back to the reflections and now we can go ahead and open up our blending modes. And it's always good to try all of them because blending modes will react differently depending on the environment. I feel like soft light is looking the best. So I'm gonna go ahead and go with that one. Now the last thing we're gonna do here is create a mask. I'm gonna take my soft round brush and I'm just going to go in here with like a 50% opacity. And we're just gonna blend out the edges so that we don't have any hard lines around the corners here. Now also keep in mind, that the way reflections work, wherever there is more light, your reflections are gonna be more prominent. Where there's less light, they're gonna fade out a little bit. So what I like to do is drop down my opacity and I like to just decrease those reflections in those darker areas and just blend it. And now we're gonna repeat the same process, but with the wall. 
So let's go ahead and now move on to the final step, which is adding in the bubbles and that underwater haze. Now for this final step, we're gonna go ahead and use my bubble brush, which I am gonna give to you. So you're gonna go ahead and create a new layer. Then for the color, you're gonna wanna select blue, but almost like a white. Okay, then go ahead and select your bubble brush and make sure your opacity is also at 100%. So whenever I'm applying bubbles, I always like to do variation in sizes. So for example, I like to put some that are really, really large and they're more like in the foreground. So, you know, they're maybe a little bit more around the edges so they're not too distracting. And then I also like to add a little bit of a blur to them. So I'm gonna take that layer and then I'm gonna go ahead and select filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And we're gonna go ahead and add five pixels so it just adds like a little bit of like this nice blur to those bubbles then I'm gonna create another layer and we're gonna place this behind those bubbles we're gonna make our brush size a little bit smaller and then we're gonna go ahead and put some in the back and maybe some in the corner like that so we're gonna go ahead and take our soft round brush and we're just going to go ahead and mask out a few of these you can also lower the opacity so you could like blend them out a little bit more as well. Something like that. So there's a quick toggle of those and the foreground ones. So that looks really nice. And then finally we have our underwater haze. So for this, what I like to do is go ahead and select a color that's like in the middle of the image. So that's gonna give me this blue color here. Then I'm just going to use my soft round brush 10% opacity and all I'm gonna do is kind of brush around the edges so kind of like I'm burning the edges but I'm literally painting over the pixels we're not using any blending modes nothing like that this is just like this nice underwater haze that we're putting over it so you can see what that looks like and then you can go ahead and pull back on that in certain areas like I want this area especially in the top of the ceiling right here to be a little bit darker and finally comes the fun part which means adding different things like fish a treasure chest maybe even a mermaid and that's it i hope this helps you with your next underwater composite thanks for watching and make sure to hit that like and subscribe button oh and let us know what you'd like to learn next in the comments okay bye